on, on surface synthesis to obtain uh, two-dimensional materials that present direct cones and semiconducting properties. Here, the outline of my talk, I will start with a few comments on graphene, then I will give you some basic concepts on, on surface synthesis in order to obtain one and two-dimensional polymeric structures, then some symmetry consideration on 2D materials that present direct cones, and at the end, our results of the synthesis of a Kagome two-dimensional pyconjugated polymers that present direct cones, flat bands, and semiconducting properties. And at the end, conclusions and perspective. So <clears throat> we cannot start uh, talking about two-dimensional material that present direct cone without uh, speak about graphene. Graphene is a single layer graphite, is constructed by sp2 covalent bonds, is conductive and stable, present zero band gap, and also high charge carrier velocity, about 10 to 6 meters for seconds. The uh, um, high charge carrier velocity comes from the presence of the direct cone into the structure. This is due to the fact that uh, graphene present uh, honeycomb lattice, and this is the direct cone that uh, can be obtained on the electronic structure. So the fact that uh, graphene uh, do not have the gap is a problem if we want to use graphene as active media in semiconductor uh, devices. There are some methods to open the gap in graphene, mainly by, by assorption of molecules or by playing with the dimensionality, so by using graphene nanoribbons of porous graphene. Here is an example. It's possible to... Um, put some hydrogen on the graphene, and you can see this is the um, angular resolved photoelectron spectroscopy map of the graphene that show that there are some electrons close to the Fermi level, but we, if we uh, put some hydrogen on graphene, you can see here uh, there is the opening of the gap. Play with the dimensionality, we can uh, use uh, graphene nanoribbon, so we can cut the graphene like in this way in order to make ribbons. And as you can see here, this is the calculation of the energy gap as a function of the width of the ribbon. You can see that uh, we have the gap, but also you can see that uh, as a function of the length, there is a dramatic change in the energy gap. So this means that if we want to use uh, nanoribbons, uh, in the materials, so we need uh, atomic precisions to do these uh, nanoribbons. We can play in two dimension by porous graphene. This is an example that presents a uh, band gap of 3.7 electron volt. We can change the shape and the dimension of the porous, and we can add different uh, um, volume gap from 1.2 electron volt to 2.3. So, <clears throat> how is possible to do this? We can use uh, this technique that is uh, surface confined polymerization. The idea is to take some monomers and put some monomers together in order to make polymers on the surface. If we consider one and core monomers, we can obtain some dimers and then zero dimensional structure. If we use two and cores in a para position, we can obtain one dimensional structure. And if we change the symmetry, we can obtain zero dimensional structure or one dimensional structure. In order to obtain two dimensional polymers, we need at least three arm core monomers. And you can see here, as a function of the number of arms, we can have different symmetries and on our final structure. So by this surface confined polymerization, we can do something that is possible to call band gap engineering. This is the results of some calculations. They take into account some different monomers with different homolumo gap, and they calculate that as a function uh, of in one dimensional and two dimensional, as a function of the monomers, uh, in principle, uh, it is possible to obtain different materials with different homolumo gap. So there are uh, several methods that can be used for surface confined polymerization, ultra vacuum conditions at solid-liquid interface and at air conditions. 
And here as a scheme is a scheme of different chemical reaction. And uh, we can divide this uh, reaction in two different classes. You can see it, it depends on the number of errors. If we have only one error, the reaction is irreversible. If we have two errors, the, re the reaction is reversible. So then we have two possible routes with reversible reaction. We have the pro that uh, since the bonds are reversible, we have the error corrections in the formation of the structure. So we have larger order domains. The con is the lack of stability in uh, humid environments, for example. If we use irreversible reaction, the main pro is that we have stable structure because the bonds are irreversible and this is very important for application. But the con is that we obtain smaller order domains. So can we do something in order to obtain the, uh, the size of this other dimension, dimension, domain? The answer is yes. We can use some irreversible polymerization reaction that is preceded by intermediate steps. And this can be stable or short-living. And uh, the use of this uh, intermediate step can be used to increase the order of the polymers by tuning the energy barrier inside the different step of the reactions. So I, we concentrate our attention on the human coupling that is uh, the most used chemical reaction is, it is a two-step reaction. In the first step, we have the formation of the organometallic phase in which we have the dehalogenation by the interaction with metal atoms. And in the second step, we have the formation of the polymers, then the formation of the uh, CC bond. So we play with uh, a very simple molecule that is 140 bromo benzene illustrated here that we sublimate on copper 110 in order to obtain polyparaphenylene polymer PPP. If we um, absorb this molecule on uh, copper 110 surface, we obtain at this uh, at room temperature these uh, scanning tunneling microscopy images showing that we have two domains of ordered structure. And then if we increase the temperature of 500 Kelvin, this domain collapses in one domain with a different structure. We measure the protrusion between the, the, the distance between the protrusion in the images, and we found different distances in the two phase. And the distance we obtain at 500 Kelvin is the one that we expect for polymer. We confirm these uh, results by using uh, X-ray photoelectron and uh, near edge X-ray absorption phi structure results. And we obtain that at room temple, we have the complete dehalogenation of the structure and the formation of the organometallic chain. And at 500 Kelvin, the carbon copper bond disappear and we have the uh, uh, formation of the polymers. This is confirmed also by the nexus, and also from nexus, we obtain information that the aromatic ring of the surface is mostly flat on the surface. We make some angular resolved photoelectron spectroscopy on this PPP uh, polymer, and we make the measurement along the direction of the polymers, and we obtain very high dispersive states that can be attributed to PPP in a good agreement with some type bonding calculations. And uh, by increasing the resolution, we are able to measure the gap that is 1.15 electron volt that is shorter than the one is expected for the isolated uh, DBB molecules in agreement with the results, uh, the radial results I showed you before. If we measure uh, along the direction or normal to the direction of the polymer, we observe that we have low dispersion of the uh, electronic states. This means that uh, our polymer is really one dimensional system. So the electrons are confined along the polymers. So we have the charge that can move along the polymer, but only inside the polymer. We try to understand if there are some intermediate step it, uh, state inside the, the reaction. We study by uh, fast X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy our system. Here uh, are the results. This is the map. Each line corresponds to one spectrum that we acquire every each second during the increase of the temperature as a function of time. And you see here there is a transition from the organometallic phase to the polymer phase. 
And we are able to uh, obtain this curve that is the number of polymers as a function of the temperature. And inside the shape of this curve, there are a lot of information on how the uh, reaction proceeds. We make some DFT calculation and we obtain this potential energy curve from the organometallic phase to the polymer phase. And as you can see here, we have uh, this transient state. We consider the presence of this transient state in order to build a kinetic uh, uh, kinetics. We fit by using this uh, theory, our experimental results make from the fast XPS. And you can see here we have a very good fit. And this means that uh, the uh, reaction present this transient state that is very important to optimize the reaction. We find also a stable intermediate step a stay, a phase uh, as a function of the number of molecules on the surface. As you can see here in the fast XPS uh, map, we have two transition, and the one transition is due to the fact that we have an additional uh, phase uh, intermediate that we are able to image by scanning tunnel in microscope. So the question is, uh, can we use uh, on-surface synthesis to obtain two-dimensional semiconductor with direct cone, taking into account all the information we gain with the study we obtain on 1D uh, polymer? So we can uh, see the other uh, two-dimensional material that present a direct cone. Here it's a scheme that shows some uh, compounds. We can divide this uh, um, compounds in two parts uh, by elementary substance of by compound. As you see, the number of the materials in two dimensions that present the raccoon is uh, uh, very uh, low. This is due to the fact that uh, if we need uh, to have uh, the Diracon in a two-dimensional system, we have a rigorous condition on the symmetry and parameter on uh, the system. It is not possible here to give you all the details. You can uh, find some um, detailed information on these two references. But uh, okay, if we have a, a, a two band system, we can write the Hamiltonian, like in this case, and to make the existence of the direct point, uh, some constraint on the Hamiltonian is required. And usually, uh, this. Uh, um, Constraints are uh, symmetry constraints. For example, we need the space-time inversion symmetry. From the particle point of view, we can uh, play with four arms core, and in order to obtain square or parallelogram, and an interesting lattice is the Lieb lattice, in which additional sites appear in between of each of the regional square lattice. So we can obtain this type of lattice. And uh, if we calculate the bands, we are able to see the data cone and also this flat band. Flat bands means it's, uh, an infinite effective mass, so we have fully localized charge carrier and vanishing carrier mobility. We can also play with three arms core, and we have hexagonal lattice. This is the lattice if we consider one side for unix cell but if we put two sides for unix cell we obtain this type of structure that is the structure of graphene that i show you before we have data coin the structure but we can also take three sides for unix cell and we form we can form this uh, new um, lattice that is called kagome lattice that is the Similar to the motif of the Japanese Kagome woven basket, I'm sure you know this type of basket you have seen somewhere in your life. And uh, if we make a calculation of this Kagome lattice, it is possible to obtain a data cone and also your flat band. So uh, I'd like to show you uh, an interesting uh, paper that appeared in 2019 on JAX, and uh, it's a theoretical uh, manuscript. They take into consideration different triangulins that uh, can be arranged in a Kagome lattice. They consider different uh, molecules with different uh, atoms in the center and different uh, bridge group. They calculate uh, the bands and they show that uh, if the center atom is uh, is carbon, we have direct cone that and the direct point is exactly at the Fermi level. 
So we have a structure very similar to graphene, but if we change the central atom to nitrogen and bottom, we can shift this uh, direct cone uh, on, the energy, uh, on the energy scale. So this is very important for applications. And they show that it's possible to modulate the gap as a function of different bridge group. So you can see here that we have different homolumo gap and also the position respect to the Fermi level change as a function of the molecules. So it's possible to obtain this lattice from the experimental point of view. The answer is yes, we obtain this very good materials. This is the scanning tunnel in microscopy that show uh, that uh, we obtain very good order. This uh, structure is the Kagome lattice. You can see here the distance between the protrusion is uh, in agreement with the theoretical calculations. We make a statistical analysis on the number of hexagons in our structure and we uh, obtain results that are twice best than the best literature example. This very high order permit us to obtain for the first time a lead pattern in which all these spots are due to the presence of the polymers and the, the measurement on the X-ray for the electron spectroscopy confirm us that all the peaks are in agreement with the formation of the polymers. So we have the polymers, so we can make this angular resolver for the electron spectroscopy in order to check the valence band. And uh, these uh, are the DFT calculations since we make this calculation along the gamma kappa direction of the gold 111 brilliant zone. And along the brilliant zone of the polymers, we have to uh, travel this uh, um, this, uh, this uh, path and uh, we calculate the expected band that have this shape along the gamma kappa direction of the gold. We make the measurement, we are able to confirm the presence of the data cone inside the structure, you can see here, and uh, our bands are in good agreement with the theoretical calculation I showed you before. And these experimental data permit us to um, measure the band velocity for this polymer on GAL 111, and we obtain 0 0.5, 10 to 6 meters per second. That is of the same order of magnitude, of which is obtained for graphene, that is 0 0.8, 10 to 6 meters per second. So this is very important. We also uh, confirm the presence of flat band. So we, at the end, confirm that it is possible to obtain these very interesting uh, materials with semiconductor property that can be used for applications. So the question is, uh, okay, we obtain these very good materials, but these materials are on gold, so not very usable substrate you want to use in application, but uh, we can transfer this polymer from the gold to uh, other different target. So we can detach, we can construct the polymer on gold on mica, we can detach the mica from the polymer on gold. Then we can put the polymer on gold on a different target and we can remove the gold and at the end obtain the complete transfer of the polymer on the target substrate, like for example, silicon dioxide that can be used to uh, make some devices. So, conclusions and perspective. So I show you that on surface synthesis permit the synthesis of Kagome two-dimensional pi-conjugated polymers with data cones, flat band, and semiconducting properties, and that this polymer can be transferred to a target substrate to be used for applications. So what are the possible applications? From the band gap structure, we can use in electronics a semiconductor that present high charge carrier velocity due to the presence of direct cone and in magnetism and superconductivity as an ideal platform for the use of strongly correlated electronic state due to the presence of flat band. And from the tunable port sites, we can use uh, this material um, as membranes for gas separations. So before uh, ending, I would like to thank all my collaborators that uh, work with me and run these uh, results possible. And I would like to thank you for your attention. Thank you.